Hi, I'm Ken Mingus. This is Mingus on Tech again, and today is Hardware Edition. We've got uh, Scott and Lucas here. We're going to be talking about the new Dell XPS 9550. It came out in October, and Scott's been reviewing it on a long-term basis. I should note Scott's a Mac fan, so I'm a little concerned about his uh, apparent <laughs> um, fondness for the new Dell. And then Lucas, and we're going to be talking with Lucas about uh, wireless charging in the uh, upcoming iPhone this year. There's been some reports lately that uh, Apple may finally be getting on board. So, uh, Scott, tell me about this Dell and why you seem to like it so much. Well, it's a pretty cool laptop. It's 4K, touchscreen, high-end everything, Skylake. But the thing that really brings it home is a trackpad that actually works. The they way finally, uh, they, Windows finally has a trackpad that uh, it's it, not is perfect. equal to a MacBook Pro? It's still it's a work in progress, but it was good enough for me to let go of my Mac for three weeks now. And That's a sad I Mac. haven't gone it's back. It's a very sad Mac. <laughs> <laughs> does, it, does the uh, trackpad have a glass top to it? Like the, it it uh, has Apple a smooth hardware? top. It, it's... Some people think it's as smooth as a Mac. So I, th- I don't think it's quite as smooth, but it's it's good enough. Okay. And I'm sure so if get you want a, want a Windows machine, this is good enough. That's yeah, I mean, the, the driver is made by Microsoft, and it's built into Windows 10. So okay. the, you can't update it as frequently as, you know, Microsoft has, has updated it maybe once this year. Okay. And, you know, that's the one drawback. I wish Microsoft would, would you know, get off the desk. They had the right idea. Okay, we'll, we'll control the horizontal here yeah. um, and make this happen. But, uh, you know, they need to progress because they don't have all the gestures that the Mac has. Well, it sounds like to me from, from the discussions we've had that it's the 4K screen that really seems to jump out at you as a, as a big plus. Yeah. Um, I, I found out that I need... With a 4K screen here, I can scale it and it's fine. But to actually get the full advantage of 4K, I need at least a 32-inch screen. Okay, so if you want the laptop, then you want 4K, then it's time to buy a monitor too. Yeah, and I did. Okay, well, just <laughs> real curious, what what, <laughs> what monitor did you get? I got a Dell Ultra Sharp UP 3216Q. Okay, so basically for 4K, if you're just using the laptop day to day, you're carrying it with you, whatever, it's going to look like a really sharp screen. But how's it going to compare to like a Retina display on a MacBook Pro? It's as I don't know what the D. I think the DPI is 20, 20, 20, 220. Okay, yeah, so it's about the same. As it's the about the Pro. same as as a Retina, right? Yeah, maybe a little less. Yeah, they'd be very close. Though. Can, I, you wouldn't be able to discern the difference. I, I need to ask this: Are you recommending this Dell over a MacBook? That's a good oh, that, we haven't gotten there yet, Lucas. Oh, yeah. no, okay. No, I'm you, sorry. I call, I call it the finest Windows notebook I've ever used. Okay. But and this not, is coming from someone review. who's been basically a Mac I, I person know. for years I'm now. I shocked. Right? Ten years. Yeah. Yeah. I'm shocked. So this is, uh, this is quite the find. Well, there's a secret here, which is that I'm addicted to Dragon Dictation software. I use it now almost for everything. Okay. It's so much faster. And the Windows version of Dragon... Ah, it's a lot better. So than it's a combination version. of the hardware and the software. So I'm, ge- you know, I've got this little extra reason to use Windows. Full disclosure. Right. Okay. Good to know. Well, now you know. All right. So we know the screen is good. You know that uh, the trackpad is 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 certainly well good enough to use. Um, one of the things that uh, the Dell has is USB C and Thunderbolt three, right? Yeah, and that's a pretty powerful advantage. Um, Thunderbolt. Three um, is forty gigabits per second, yeah. and I just I just got the Dell Thunderbolt um, dock, which has every port you can imagine, and it's all running through this one Thunderbolt three cable, which uses the USB C, the the latest version of USB right. port, which uh, like Apple's Lightning is reversible. It's a pretty cool. Po- I mean, forty gigabits per second is m- you know, mega tr- data transfer rate. Right. You know. C- can I ask this? Because I'm yeah. wondering, have you tested, have you noticed a difference? Because I'm wondering if there are limitations other than the specification sheet of 40 gigabits per second or 10 gigabits per second uh, with Thunderbolt that would actually allow this to be a faster data transport mechanism. I mean, there are translation protocols going on between uh, external hardware that would probably limit it. Right. Um, that's possible. I, you know, I actually, it's. 
I just got the dock yesterday, and I've had some trouble with the USB on it. You know, there, there, and I had to update the BIOS and the the uh, dock drivers in order to use it. You know, I mean, it's it's early days for this kind of stuff. Right. So, but I think they'll get it worked out. The one thing is that Thunderbolt three is based on both USB C or USB really and DisplayPort. Right. You know, and it, it's sort of a, a mind meld of those and Thunderbolt. Mm-hmm. Um, it because it's based on existing specifications. I think it will do well you know, going forward. Get the so, if you want to future proof yourself, this is a good way to do it. it this is like. probably the best way, and you know, Intel's behind it, Apple's behind it, uh, Dell's behind it, a bunch of other companies. So, in terms of build quality, you know, one of the things that Apple always likes to tout is that the build quality of its hardware is top notch. How, how does this seem to stack up against again a MacBook Pro? It, it's I mean, it's different, but it does start with a, a carved aluminum base, you know, a machine aluminum yep. base like the MacBook Pro does. There's a sandwich here um, of... Uh, Is it carbon fiber? C- yeah, thanks, carbon fiber. Yeah. And then there's aluminum on the top again. Mm-hmm. So it's it's similar, but there's the sandwich of the carbon fiber. I mean, I, I the have carbon to, fiber feels nice on the hands. It's yeah. You know, I have to admit, just looking at it, I, you know, the design is nice. You've got the lighted keyboard. You've got the excellent screen, and uh, you know, well, the, I all guess the details that Apple put into theirs. Yeah. These guys have put in, and they've come up with some of their own, but mostly it's it's a Windows MacBook Pro. Okay. So basically, if you're a Windows user, you like Windows. You've used it. You've upgraded from seven or eight to ten. And you want something that's as high quality as the, or the perceived high quality of a MacBook Pro? This is the machine. It sounds like. I think so. I mean, you, there, the other one is the Surface Book. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, you know, I th- I'd say they're neck and neck, but the Surface Book has had, you know, according to Paul Thoreau and others, is it Thoreau or Thoreau? Thoreau, I think. Oh, whatever. Yeah. Um, Paul. Paul, we'll just yeah. call Paul. Uh, you know, there have Sorry, been Paul. there are numerous firmware issues and, and other issues. They kind of rushed it. Yeah. I'm sure they'll get it straight, but you know, um, this is the one I'd go with. Okay, so back to back to Lucas's question. So you've got what, twenty five hundred to spend, roughly, is that what this would go for? Yeah. All right, so mm-hmm. twenty which is about the price of a top end MacBook Pro. Um, well, let's be honest. A top-end MacBook Pro could go to thirty-five hundred. Well, yeah. If you trick out, yes. If you add the uh, terabytes SSD and exactly. the, the the top-end chip, and even then, the chip would not be the latest. This has got Skylake, right? And not the, not today, but you know, there there are pretty strong rumors right now that a Skylake MacBook Pro is coming. Yeah, I'm waiting for one. So, all right, so twenty-five hundred bucks. Somebody says you you can buy this, or you can get a MacBook Pro that's not quite totally tricked out. What do you do? Well, when Apple releases the next MacBook Pro 15, I'll be buying the tricked out one. Okay. I mean, so I'm getting another Mac, yep. but I can't promise you that I'll use it as much as this computer. Okay. So sort of a mixed verdict. Good if you're Windows and hold on, hold on if you're uh, waiting for the top of the line MacBook Pro. Wait Something till later like in the that. Year. Yeah. Okay. Good. All right. Good to know. That's really cool. Thank you very much for that. Um, Lucas, I wanted to sort of switch gears a little bit. One of the things you've written about recently is uh, the idea that wireless charging may finally be coming to the uh, iPhone. Yeah. And, uh, uh, as we've as we've written and reported before, Apple's been kind of late to the game here. So, what's going on? Is it going to happen? I don't know. Okay. <laughs> uh, I mean, what do you think? Th- you, you know, right? think, maybe. Well, you know what? I, I think they've ignored it for a time. I think what they're doing is they're contemplating it. They're okay. saying, how do we want to roll this out? Do we want it to be proprietary? Do we want to use one of the three standards that are already out there? Yeah, they have to pick, there? right? They have to decide which one they want. I'm hoping they choose a standard. I mean, not, not that I care. And not, come not up that with I think own. that any of the standards are more su- are superior. Yeah. Uh, although they do offer different features, but. You know, yet another proprietary system from Apple. I, you know, come on, join the crowd. Let people who are already using these wireless chargers out there in restaurants, and coffee shops, uh, slap down their their iPhone is, on a countertop and charge. Is that mostly the Qi? 
uh, standard Q I using? yeah chi. Uh, is, is, is that, that how you pronounce the, that? Pronounced chi, I think. It's pronounced chi. I have no Q-I. idea why it's pronounced that way, but yeah, yeah. chi. And uh, yeah, that's probably the the most widely adopted. That and power mat. Okay. Um, from Duracell. Yeah. And uh, but but they're not so widely adopted that these organizations aren't coming together to actually join technologies such as tightly coupled wireless charging. Yeah. That's like the Apple Watch has, loosely. right? Where exactly. you plant it right on the little exactly. charger. Exactly. Yeah. It's got to be perfectly positioned on the charger in order to charge, and then you have this more loosely coupled sort of magnetic resonance that allows you to place it in, on any access on the charger and it'll still charge and then you have something uh, even more loosely connected which allows you to set a an object down a wireless enabled object right and charge a little distance from the charger so you don't have to think as much about how you're placing that uh, mobile device down to be charged is that the sort of technology that's in the uh, furniture that ikea has been developing the wireless charging furniture yeah they have them more loosely mm-hmm. coupled so you can point, you just sit it on your end access. table and it's close enough that it'll pick up the charge no it, it actually has to be right over the uh, the charger okay and i'll show you what that looks like it yeah. basically this is one from air charge okay but it, this is basically it's embedded in the furniture okay but it allows you to place the uh, wireless device on top of it at any access and it'll still charge okay but you can't really place it any distance from it it won't charge that way it has to be on top of it okay. but there are chargers coming out that will resonate that magnetic field is that the is distance carrying. charging thing and i've seen where you can walk into a room and your devices will start to charge now, up that's a whole nother that's what i want i yeah, want jets that's a I'm whole nother animal few, i'm with you i'm that's that's what i want yeah. you know i don't know if it's going to charge cancer room. but no we don't know anything about that yeah, okay. but I'm, I'm saying walking into a room and just having your phone all of a sudden light up and say it's charging that's where we want to go yeah. stepping into your car with your phone in your pocket and it just automatically starts charging and wirelessly connects via bluetooth to your informatic your entertainment system yep. that's, that's what we want to be you're basically talking well, about wireless car play right. sorry to interrupt yeah, no, go. what's coming you started to say something about something in between those two things so I think we're talking about Wi-Fi charging basically right. using Wi-Fi to charge uh, mobile devices so you walk into a room and they're using a, a specific frequency to send power to that wireless device and there are prototypes out there there are companies out there that are coming out with this and according to um was it bloomberg or uh, bloomberg or ihs were the two uh, I most ihs okay said ihs is the one that said basically yeah there are industry rumors that uh apple is coming out with one and then bloomberg said they're working with partners both here in the U- united states and in asia uh, to bring this technology out. So does that mean it would have Wi-Fi range or I, high, what kind of range? I don't think that's what Apple's going to do. I think Apple's going to go with probably a loosely coupled magnetic resonance uh, technology. So, so like a larger version of the little charger you have for an Apple Watch now, right? It, it, it's built into the phone. Only and it you could put be the farther down. away. The than difference that. being that you could you don't have it doesn't have to be in a specific orientation on the charger. Okay. You just plop it down on top of it; it'll charge. Okay. They might even go with something that has a greater distance of resonance, and you'll be able to plop it down. You know, maybe a, few a couple inches away, s- maybe a centimeter, a couple centimeters okay. away from it, okay. so you don't have to think about it. Because let's be honest, you know, okay what's the advantage here I can either plug my phone in or I can set it down on top of a wired charger it's a slim advantage it's a tiny advantage but if you can make it so that that magnetic charge that magnetically induced charge uh, is at distance well then all you do is sit down at your desk and put your phone on your desktop and not even think about it right that's the real advantage you don't want to have to kind of find the correct orientation to place your no, phone the whole down. idea of really you want to make it as and this would be the apple way they want to right. make it you don't have to think about it right it, it just works quote right. unquote and they also have let me just add this they, there are also companies that put out boxes and you can drop multiple devices in this box and they're all charged at the same time. There's another advantage. So if you have an Apple Watch, yeah. if you have uh, a couple of uh, cell phones, if you have a, com- a laptop, which takes a greater charge, which they're also coming out with, okay. magnetic charge, resonant charging for laptops, then you'll be able to charge multiple, multiple devices at the same time. So now you don't need a USB hub or some other multiple just put it in the bowl or the box put it in the bowl or sit it on your desk and multiple devices charge there's the advantage that's where we're going 
Okay, that's good to know. Well, that explains it then. I had seen these reports about the iPhone. I mean, I know that there'll be a new, well, we assume there'll be a new iPhone out this yeah. fall. There'll be one next year. And at some point along the way, Apple's likely to get involved with wireless charging. Hoping, yeah. Okay, great. <laughs> All right, well, listen, Scott, Lucas, thanks very much. That's a wrap for this week.